All right, so no John. Did John say he wasn't coming today? It's quiet. Z-Way's not here. Z-Way's not here. <laughs> so weird. So and no Dan. Yeah. That's it. No. Oh, no. Heck, oh. oh, never mind. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so today is Fuseki Day. Yay! Yay! <laughs> there we go. And the first fuseki, and so for what, what is a fuseki? I talk about fuseki, what is that word? And how is it different than joseki? It's an opening pattern. It's an opening pattern, and so is joseki. Fuseki is the whole joseki board. or local Yeah, joseki are usually a local pattern, or fuseki is sort of the, the whole board kind of thing. So the very first fuseki I want to show you is something you guys have probably all seen already. But it's worth pointing out because this goes in the face of our traditional opening theory, because we've talked a lot about traditional opening theory over the last couple of weeks, right? What's traditional opening theory? What's our priority? Number one, corners. Corners, then. Approaching close. Then. Approaching close, then. Large extensions. Large extensions, then. Small extensions. Small extensions, then. The center. Center vertical moves, right? Moves that go in here. Okay. This Fuseki. Kind of skip some steps. Where is black stone in the? Is that five four or four four? Okay. <laughs> How many of you have seen this before? Yeah. Angela, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, everybody. Anyone know the name? Sunrinse. Sunrinse. Uh, three star points, I think. Yeah, sun means three. Ren say say I think means star. Ren. Well, star is normally yeah. Hoshi. Clearly, uh, Hoshi, the Rensei means yeah. star points because it's just knee Rensei also. Right, so I don't know, something. Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> okay. Sam means three of them, though. So how is this different than our traditional opening theory? What's wrong here? You're not making an approach. You were supposed to be making an appro approach, right? This is supposed to be the best move on the board. So all the corners are taken, right? We're on approach moves. So why aren't we doing that? Why are we doing this? doubly a large extension. It's doubly a large extension, so that's pretty cool. So we could say this is pretty efficient. And not only is it a large extension, there's a key concept we're going to see over and over and over again in these Fuseki. How far away is this extension? Five right. spaces. Five spaces. Why is this important? Because it's hard for white to approach safely. Close? Yeah. Very base. close. Invade safely. And make a base yeah. in here at all, safely. Here, check this out. Let's say I have, I'm gonna move these to the third line just for demonstration. I'm gonna put them six spaces apart. Let's say white is able to play a move over here that, that threatens, or black needs to respond to. White can play this. What do we know about this shape? Base. It's a base. Has base potential. Has base potential, right? This is the prototypical base, right? Third line, two stones apart, two spaces. Right, this is how we make a base when we're not sure what to do. Just make a base, two spaces, third line. Right? You guys have seen this before. All right, I'm gonna put this stone here. Now what happens? Yeah, when white plays this, white is asking for trouble. White is already under attack. This stone is already getting weak. So we want some distance here for white. So in other words, a six space extension allows white to play, or has the potential to play too comfortably. So to counter that, we play a five space extension. White only goes there. And there's all sorts of crazy things we can do to continue the attack on this. But white doesn't quite have the same base potential here anymore. Okay? And this is the difference. It's, it's, a, it's both inefficient for white to play these two stones close together, and it doesn't really accomplish a whole lot in terms of making a base, making eyes. So five space extensions, be it high or low, are really efficient in terms of making this side of the board more difficult on your opponent. So if San Rense has not just one, but two five space extensions, making this whole side of the board very difficult for our opponent. And this is why, you know, sometimes we'll even skip this, the second highest priority in a go game, right? Approaching a corner, and just play this, because having two five space extensions is so good. This is like, much better than the alternate there, or just close enough to consider the, the short answer to your question, John, is we don't know. <laughs> okay. So within our within our competency and knowledge, it seems to be close enough. It's close enough, as far as we can tell. Yeah. Okay. We can't we can't say anything else more than that. Yeah. 
Um, this move, historically, is not a historical go move, right? Players did not play this sort of move. Although, even just the 4-4s, four that's a relatively recent phenomenon, too, in the last 100 years that really you know, came about into its own. Um, but this, putting right in between them, really didn't happen until the 1930s. People like Go Sagan you know, started playing this way. So, you know, we're not, we're not going to go, we're, we're only going to look at one opening prior to this, I think, today, one Fuseki that, that dates back earlier today, um, some of you might know of. Uh, but as far as openings go, um, it's still, you know, it's still been around for a while. It's, it's, it's classic, you know. Okay, Samarin Se. Usually, I don't like to play it. I just, I'm, I'm happy to play in Samarin Se as white. Very happy. I just think it's over-concentrated. It doesn't, even though I really like outside games, I like big outside influence kind of, kind of strategies. I feel like too many of my stones are all inside the board. And white's next move, almost always, is going to be down here. Over here, same thing, right? I was going to start reducing this from the outside. Just trying to make sure black only gets this for the entire game. So, normal moves. Sometimes white will do this, but I think it's a terrible idea. Because if white makes this now, well, we have two players who are both claiming their side of the board, and eventually these two moyos are going to meet somewhere, right? They're going to, like, like, we have monster A crawling this way and monster B crawling this way, and they're each eating food along the way, and there's one piece of food right in the middle. Who's going to get to that piece of food in the middle first? Black, monster A, right? Because black has the first move. So eventually, if we just build out from our own, black's going to win this game. So as white, we prioritize uh, reducing. Right, black has more potential, so it's time for us to reduce now. High level of thinking, but very relevant to playing at Sanrense. Cool? All right, let's compare this with another Fuseki. And black, white, black, white. How is this different? Not on the star. It's not on the star, I missed. <laughs> It's got sloppy. Next move for black. <laughs> Five space low, or high, but usually low extension. Yeah, from this stone, right? Yeah. So again, we take that same concept of the Sanrense, right? Still, we, we claim our side of the board, but we want a five space extension. <clears throat> so we play here or here. This is more normal. This one's actually quite rare now. These two, uh, I'll put it there for now. <laughs> These two uh, fusekis make up what we call the Chinese fuseki. You guys heard of the Chinese opening? Yeah. Right? This is it. And you're like, so what's the big deal? Right? It's like Sanran say with a couple of missed stones. Yeah. Well, would playing on the fourth line with the other stone being low just maybe just give white too much uh, uh, invasion uh, potential there? You mean, uh, yeah, I'm just I can't. I can't tell you all the differences. There's a book uh, I think Kato Masao wrote called The Chinese Opening, where he details all the differences and the variations. Oh. Um, but I think it basically boils down to when Black plays here, White actually has a few more avenues to yeah, yeah. live here and reduce this a little bit more easily. It's still not easy though. That's the thing about the Chinese Opening is that uh, you're in trying to induce White into invading you. All right? When we play like this, when we just say we want this and the outside. White is actually kind of content in saying, you know what, I'm just going to reduce you from the outside and that'll be fine. You know, I can still invade later. They're still kind of open. Whereas here, it's actually kind of, kind of difficult to reduce this from the outside because this actually becomes quite solid quite quickly. Right? Because we already have a stone down here. There's, no, there's very little potential in the corner now. Whereas with a stone here, you know, if we do, I don't know, if we try to take our middle, that's a bad example, but let's say, just try to take our middle here. White can take this corner immediately. Yeah. <clears throat> right? Leaves the corner far more open. So this actually has less potential, territorially speaking, than this. This has a lot more potential in terms of territory. Right? This one has a lot more potential in terms of outside influence. Right? Fourth line stones want to build more outside stones. Third line stones want to play defensive, build territory. So what happens when white comes here? Well, usually black uh, plays a nice move, right? Because that's a vulnerable stone. In this case, we already have a stone here. Yeah. 
you want to attack white directly. All right, let's take a look. Where does white want to make a base in this case? There, right? <laughs> Two stone wall means we want to play a three space extension. So why can't white play that? <laughs> Black has a stone there, right? Beautiful. So very dangerous for white to come in low here. Very dangerous. This can be attacked very easily. White just has to run, make no points and run. That's not a good opening if you're running in the opening. So usually white will play high. And there's actually a number of variations. Some of them are very modern. Um, this is actually possible, especially if black has something else on the outside. Most normal is to go here. And again, same idea, just try to attack white. Don't let white get a base. Although with the high one, it's actually a little bit easier for white to settle. Something like this. White almost kind of has a base, right? See those two stones, right? Two, uh, two space extension kind of forming the core of it. Not completely uh, settled yet, but white is getting closer, but at what cost? Just left black open up. Yeah, black has potential over here now. The stone isn't weak. This is also kind of cool. If white tries to attack this, black's just going to attack white again. That's it. So the stone is still strong. Uh, this is the normal continuation, though. Uh, but the idea is that you're going to induce white here, to try to reduce you here, prevent you from taking a surge or so black can attack. That's the basic idea this, mm -hmm. this way. And if white comes on the outside, black actually can also easily turn this into territory as well. We can just play this here. Why would white jump into the gap, into the bigger gap between the black sides? Uh, over here? Yeah. yeah, totally possible. I like this one a lot in this case. But it's also going to allow black uh, to build this easily. Uh, right here? Sure. Uh, we could play this, or even this, but even if we just play simple. Black is just going to build this outside. Normal just like he ends like that. So that's a that's a opening kind of Joseki. And we white's got one black stone. Uh, white has this. Yeah. <laughs> what does black have? Mm. Well, black has a lot of influence in the. Yeah, this is scary, isn't it? Mm. Do you guys remember like the importance of making a box? And how efficient a box is in terms of getting your potential. This is looking a lot like a box, isn't it? It's a, it's a box with a concrete corner. That's a pretty nice looking box, yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't have to go this way. There are other, other variations, of course. Yeah, I was thinking more But like the danger of white coming in here is you can still be pressed down, you can still be attacked, but black can still make a lot of influence really easily because black already has stones over here. Black already has support. So whatever you do over here, black is gonna try to take advantage. Part of my thought was like if at this point instead of white going diagonally in the corner, if it just played the two jump, the two space jump. Ah, um, so this, this. No, going. Make a base. Oh, make a base. Make a base. Sure. Or make a hint to the base. Wait, black plays here. Does white have to respond to that, or can he then try to pincer and like attack this? Yeah. Ooh. He likes starting fires. Dairy. Yeah, there's a saying, I think it's a Chinese saying, like, don't go out if your house is on fire. <laughs> right? Like, if white just jumps, white kind of needs a move on both sides, doesn't it? Yeah, white needs moves everywhere. Black actually might not want to jump uh, because of moves like this, but even then, I don't think this is good. I don't think this is even that good for white. White can kind of link up under here, but black's just going to get a giant wall here. Be pretty solid. Um, but even if black doesn't want to jump. Running the link up. Yeah. We can still play something like this. And black yeah, comes over here. 
here. I don't know. There's a fire over here, and there's a fire over here. Which fire do you want to put out first? This is this is tough now for these white stones. Yeah. Is it really so tough for the ones on the bottom? These? Yeah. These are these are okay right now. These are fine. And in fact, you can even counterattack this corner. Because I was just thinking that that helps create some Aji so that maybe an attack on the lower side would make more sense. Yeah. I mean, this is all possible. Yeah. But. Um, it's vulnerable. Would you rather have? Uh, what do we play? We play this move and this move. That one and that move. Uh, really moves yeah, we play these two moves, right? So. Uh, one? Uh, uh, I don't know, it seems like. Wait, did you want to put two white stones in here? Did you want to make this exchange? Do you want the board to look like this or like how it just did? Because if you make it look like this, well, now we still have Aji actually to eat the corner a little bit. If we play it out, we lose that. It goes away. Um, still a game, but here's the, here's the behavior I'm trying to correct, Angela, is if you have a weak group over here, um, if you're willing to sacrifice this, you just say, nope, give up. Mm -hmm. Don't go make a weak group over here. Because one of these is going to need at least an extra move. Yeah. And that means your opponent's going to get an extra move on the other side. So... When, let's talk about this for a moment, because this is a good thing to talk about. Let's say white did get this, maybe even this, made this exchange. White is very strong here, right? Now this is a great move. Right. Now your house isn't on fire over here. You're not going to get killed. You can just worry about one stone. As long as you only worry, have to worry about one thing in the game of Go, you're going to do fine. If you're trying to worry about two things, you're in trouble. It's pretty normal. So if Black just tries to attack this, oh, lots of fun things. We can even play like that. It's kind of neat. Let's so try to take away our base. Probably not. Nice. I'll take the Atari, even I'm not sure if that's correct. Getting, we can even try to link up first. Almost alive. That's kind of crude, but again, we're strong over here. I don't have to worry about this dying. So I can do whatever I want over here, no problem. All right, let's get back on track. The moral of the story. If you play Chinese, what are you trying to do? Invite, the invite your opponent into here, right? So you got to make this as almost as enticing as possible. So really common follow-ups if white comes over here uh, and does this, or let's just say this plays normal here. From the outside normal, that is. Black can play another move over here. White really wants to come in here now, right? You just want to attack. For this reason, another really common move when black plays the Chinese is actually for white just to take this just to try to limit the potential. So coming in here later on will be a lot easier when there's a friend in the neighborhood. Okay, so Low Chinese, this, is, uh, this has been played pretty much, I mean, it was invented basically about 50 years ago, like the very early people have played it, although it really didn't become popular until the 70s and the 80s. Uh, really the 80s, I think, is when it really kind of took off as its own opening. And guess who made it very popular? by the Chinese, although it's actually quite debatable whether or not it was actually invented in China. Uh, most people agree it was actually a, a Japanese invention. Um, but the thing is, is with a lot of early Go uh, from hundreds of years ago, um, Chinese used, to play, used a system of placement. There would actually be a set pattern of stones on the board before every game. And I think the Chinese one, I kind of get them confused with the Korean. So I think the Chinese, yeah. This is the Chinese, right? How, how every game, the Chinese would start with this on the board. There was no opening. Like this was your opening. And for hundreds of years, uh, they played this way. And in Japan, it was a completely wide open board. So the Japanese got really good at the opening, right? Because they had to play it every game. The Chinese, at least really until uh, you know, the 20th century, didn't play any openings. So the Chinese were not good at the opening. 
And so in the 70s and 80s, this opening, this Chinese opening became very popular because all these Chinese professionals started being Japanese professionals while playing this. And that was a big deal because they're, they're like, we have our one size fit all opening. We don't have to play the opening ever again. We just play this. <laughs> and we can, we can go right to the fighting, which is what they're good at, right? The Chinese, because they start with this cross game, they're very good at fighting and developing. And if they try to prevent that by going to the cross game, all of a sudden they're playing into their strength. Right, well, there's that sort too. of. Yeah. But Japanese would prevent the cross game, right? And try to play a normal opening. So it's head up. But this, the Japanese couldn't prevent, right? You can't prevent if you just follow, you know, traditional opening theory, play corners and approach moves. If you play black, white can never prevent this from happening. Do you guys know how to play to never prevent this? Or so you can never prevent this as your opponent? Let's how try. To play, how to play as black. Yeah, how to play as black. How to, how to force a Chinese. How to, how to... Well, if white wants to prevent you, he's going to play okay. same side and not... Right. So white plays here, right? He says, aha, you can't make Chinese. We you play Chinese. the other way. Yeah, you play over here. White can still split. White can still through, play in here. Right? <laughs> but we still have that traditional opening theory thing, right? Yeah. And black goes, oh, okay, you're going to play that? Well, that's fine. I'll play I got three corners. You got one. I would. <laughs> right? If white wants this corner, Chinese, voila. I can't help it. So in the 80s, this became the de facto opening for an entire generation of players. This was very, very popular. Uh, and still is. People still play it. Although it's lost a little bit of ground, I think actually quite a bit of ground, um, to another variant of the Chinese, or two more variants of the Chinese, the mini Chinese and the micro Chinese. How many of you know these? <laughs> two? Three, two and a half. Two and three quarters. I've watched you, one of your videos you, on it. Yeah, we've done this in one of the videos before. Most of you, I think Tom and Matt were the only ones here for that one, right? This is like the first time. I am from the days of your. Yeah, I, 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 I remember something. I you. you remember something? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I keep trying to play mini Chinese, but my opponents never let me. Your opponents never let you? No. <laughs> Alright, well here. I'm gonna well we'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna be black and be white. Here, you play what do you want what do you want to play? Uh well, I mean you actually just prevented immediately by playing same side, don't you? I've been thinking about There's no same side. <clears throat> what? This which side? Side lower right corner, side four four. Okay. Sure. I'll play here. Yeah. Where do you play now? Well, if you play, you play 4-4 as white probably most commonly. Black can approach. Very good. My thing is, my opponents always pincer me. Ah! Like jerks. Ah, <laughs> alright. Well, we're going to talk about an opening you can do when your opponents pincer you. That actually goes to another opening called the lay opening. Mm -hmm. So, normal move is here. Let's be defensive. And if your opponent does this, this means you can play the, the mini Chinese opening. Why is this the mini Chinese? <laughs> it's the same thing except your 4 4 stone is yeah, farther. Right. Approach move. Yeah. yeah, watch, right? Mini Chinese looks like this, this, and this, right? Well, we've taken that formation and we've shrunk it. Made them for our opponent on the side. Why is this good? So you still have that five space extension up there. Yeah, again, this is the key component, right? Our, our major developable area is a five space extension. That's sort of the key idea. Um, furthermore, this stone, while it's not directly making a base for this stone, they are related. It actually makes this stone a little bit harder to kill. Actually, a lot harder to kill. So this move does two things, right? Makes a five space extension, develops this corner, as well as helps this stone out. So that's nice. So we like that. And furthermore, we could say black is actually developing this side as well as this way. And white so far has only developed one side. So black is still ahead in terms of the development potential, which is good. Uh, often white will actually just come in and split here. That's fairly normal. But white could also try to develop as well. It's a game. Okay. White still doesn't want to come in here for all the same reasons, right? Coming into that corner is going to get attacked early on. You want to delay coming in here until all the big points have been taken. So once all the big points are taken, then you, know, you can think about doing this. But right now, bigger stuff is still on the board, right? We're dividing the pie, find the biggest piece of pie that's still out there. I think that's something that maybe I, at some point, don't really quite realize. Because it seems to me that some of my games I've seen this big jump 
and that's it. Oh, goody. And I jump right in there. Ah. And, and I'm wondering, is this you mean, maybe right, because you mean this jump I, here? Yeah. yeah. Is, this, is this because that I'm missing a bigger move, i not seeing the bigger move, or is it maybe because I think it's going to be worth more than it actually turns out? To Probably both. Mm. And maybe it's just stickier to deal with it? Is this sticky to deal with? Yeah. Right? I mean, okay. you don't have enough room to make a base comfortably. So should look at that as being really constricted. Yes. Five spaces means all the other big stuff has to be done. Hmm. You have to you have to have a good reason for going in there. So that's not really a big it might be a medium sized space, but it's not a big space. Not the biggest, yeah. It's, cer it's certainly developable, right? You, you definitely if, if given the choice of never jumping in there and jumping in there, you want to jump in there. Okay, if given just all things being equal. But it shouldn't be the most the biggest thing. Right? There's still all these other spaces on the board here. Yeah. That need to really kind of get a little more sketched out first. So again, mini Chinese, we like it because again, it has the same development in the corner. Um, it also gives a little bit of help to this stone. Let's compare this one to the micro Chinese. And I think the Koreans actually call this the mini mini Chinese. <laughs> this is the direct translation, but we say micro. Uh, there. Now this looks weird, right? This one versus that one. What's the emphasis here? You're emphasizing this quote-unquote enclosure more. Yeah, it's actually even more difficult to jump in here now. But what's the catch? It's easier to jump in the other. Yeah, it's easier to invade over here. But I want to point out something. Over here, we had a five-space extension. Want to do this one? Still a five-space. It's still a five-space extension, but where's the five-space extension? Right here. It's low, though. It's low, but it's still a five. Again, the point of the five space extension is to make life difficult on your opponent, right? If your opponent comes in here, their life is going to be a difficult one. I mean, it might still be a fight. You still have to, you know, get your stones out and not let them get eaten. But your opponent doesn't have an easy life here. That's the idea. So this is as far away as we can go. Um, I think I say. I think I saw someone. I I, I don't quite remember who it was, um, but at the US Go Congress, someone asked one of the professionals. Will we ever see the micro micro Chinese? <laughs> Nano Chinese. <laughs> and they said, no. This will not happen. Right? And again, because even though it looks like it helps the corner more, it does. It still leaves a defect in the corner. This is still invadable. And we, we're overextended here. Now, well, I can play a move like this and attack this stone. If black jumps out, white can actually make a base. White's too comfortable. All right? That's too far. So a lot of these opening fuseki really are just, you know, where do you put your five space extension, right? And seeing that as not necessarily your land, your territory, but as a place where if your opponent goes there, you're going to have fun for a little while, right? It's going to be to your advantage. It's sort of like, it's like home field advantage, if you want to think of it that way. Like, you're not going to win the game necessarily, but it definitely helps to have 50,000 fans screaming in your favor than your opponents. <laughs> so home field advantage, right? Cool. Tom said his opponents don't cooperate. Yeah. So Everyone pincers all the time. <laughs> but so all of, all of Tom's opponents are dung wipes. <laughs> and go there. I say, you cannot make mini Chinese. <clears throat> well, there's an opening invented in Korea. Again, it's called the, I think it's called the Lei opening. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. I believe it's the Lei. Uh, Play there. Just play orthodox. Let's go right into This is called orthodox. We haven't seen orthodox yet, but this is the orthodox formation. Well, so it seems like that's maybe just kind of given way before white say, take it, or is that? That's right. Way? It's like, that's right. What are you going to do about that, huh? You want to take it? This, you want to take it? Is this basically like white, you have a choice of, of either catching that, the one black stone or going the other way? or? Yeah, here's, the, here's, here's what's developing here. Black, this becomes very developable now, yeah. right? Because one more move. Not only do we have a five space extension, five space extension, this is actually forming one half of the walls for our box. Right? And we talked about how good boxes are a couple weeks ago, right? White, black gets this move too. This becomes very difficult for white to invade. Right? Half of this side of the board is almost guaranteed black points. 
I don't care which half. Whatever black, whatever white tries to invade, the other half black points. Is that move prevent the three three invasion in the upper? Uh, it's co. A normal three three invasion can go to. Actually, it can also be alive too if black has nothing else. If black has a little bit more support, white has an easy co here. That's a very big co. Um, it depends actually, David. But here's uh, the co variation. threats while crawling here. Uh, and the other variation is this one. But this one actually very much depends what's going on over here. Without anything else, uh, without any, I, I, there's ladders. Right, but I can play over here. And I can play here. So there's some possibility of like living there. There's still possibilities, but it's still actually it's difficult. It's not easy. Um, but yes, definitely possibilities, absolutely. And that co variation is actually a huge variation if white wins that co, because all this territory is going to get destroyed for black in the process of winning that of losing that co. Anyway, uh, let's go back. So this looks very developable for black, right? We have a sort of a wall. We got a wall, make a box. Uh, furthermore, the stone is not dead yet. Even if white plays a move like this, there are still some nasty variations here for white to deal with. Uh, the simple one, the non, one of the non-nasty ones, is for just black to go, okay, I'm gonna go over here. Do you really want to kill that stone? And if white says, no, nope, I'm gonna go do my own thing, I'll go take away your potential. Easy variation, black can just go here and just live in the corner. Hard variation. Nasty one, there. Huge fight. If white is a pansy, white doesn't have to fight. Uh, but, I think there is better. Uh, black just slips in the corner. If black, or if white does fight, I really don't want to play this out because I don't know it. But lots of Aji. Black has a ladder right now. So do you want to defend this stone? If you don't, Black just makes a giant wall here. This is actually quite strong for Black. White got the corner but is reduced and black is safe. That's the timid, complicated variation. If we don't want to give that up, uh, not even really sure how to do that. Is that extra black stone there? Uh, da, 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 da. It's yeah, uh, white's move, yeah. That's white's move. Well, no, you start out with the black stone between the two white ones. White, or black, yeah. white, or black. black. Now it's white. White. Okay. I don't know anymore. This involves reading, not good for reading. Hard, very hard. So everybody's cut. So black can make a mess here. Whenever black. Another possibility in this lay opening is actually for white just to do this. This is also very common. Don't attack this directly yet. Just make it more difficult for black to come in the corner. You know, make sure your str your stones are strong first, and then you can go play elsewhere. Does black come out here? Only? No, black doesn't touch that yet. <laughs> okay. Black just goes and plays that, or you know, wherever. Other common move is just for white to do this directly. And uh, this has a lot of variations because black can push this stone either way, and then run this out, and then fight over here. Lots of variations. But. Let's go back to the original concept. When white plays this, why is this important? Prevent the invasion. Uh, what do you mean the approach? Well, well if, you, if you, you, one possibility here is you're going to play a second stone further down. But if you did that second stone first, that would have let white come in. So basically, you're playing your middle stone first, like an approach. Mm -hmm. You can do this, this up, but it, 
Well, there's another reason. Oh. I mean, that, 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 that may be true. I think there's a simpler reason. It's still a good move. It's always a good move, yeah. right? It takes the corner, it develops a side. But in this situation, do you guys know this, Joseki, if we didn't play anything over here? Where would black go normally? Jump out. Even more normal. Jump out the corner. Yeah, take the corner. Yeah. Right, right here. Normal move for white. Split. In this case, split. Yeah. Matt, when do we play this way? I yeah. thought it was in the pincer case, but I don't remember anymore. Right. right. He's a stone here to block this way. Right. Otherwise, this wall's gonna be useless. So we play this way. And this is Joseki. So black gets out. One, two, three, jump. Right. Get our one, two, three, jump rule. But now, where does white play? He gets to approach. <clears throat> Start working on that box. We have a wall, approach the corner, force white, force black down, make a box. So, this is normal, right? If we go back. Okay, good thing. Whoops. What is this doing? Preemptively preventing that approach and making it so white can't use that wall. Yeah, totally preemptive, right? Black is anticipating white making a wall this way, trying to make a box, so you know what? I'm just gonna take that away right now. If you don't want that to happen, you have to do something with this stone right now and I'll go play somewhere else. So it's a, it's a really interesting, subtle kind of negotiation, right? Well, white can still make a box, so it's just gonna be greatly reduced. I'm, uh, if you make a small box, I am happy. <laughs> yeah, screen I care games. about big boxes, right? Yeah, yeah. If you want to make a box, go right ahead. But if you can always, if your opponent has a choice between a big box and a small box, you want to have the small one. Because in doing so, white will get a small box here, but black will get this corner and this corner. Right, so two big corners. Because black will you know, live down here and, live, and obviously live over here. So a lot of potential. So that's the layout. Um, we heard this mentioned, we heard an orthodox opening mentioned. We just talked about the mini Chinese, they all do this. Same idea as the mini Chinese, except we're just gonna play this first. And what's nice about this? Got an enclosure facing. Yeah, already, we already have points. What else? Enclosure facing the side point that we have. Yeah, facing another one of our stones, it's like we're starting two sides of our box already. That's real good. And furthermore, this stone is actually sticking into white a little bit. Right? White wants to develop outward from these stones. These are outside stones. And this is sort of like a little bit of like a, like a you know, you stick your foot in the door kind of thing. Like it's actually a lot more difficult for white to develop this side because this stone is so strong. It's, it's, it's dug in on the third line. Right? If white tries to come over here. Well, I can actually do this, no problem. Right, the stone helps. White will never get really strong over here with the stone. So often what white does is white says, oh, you're trying to build something? I go here. So this is what we call the orthodox game, right? This is sort of the, I don't know, one of the most standard kind of, kind of ideas. And how did we get to it? Alex, you want to make an orthodox game? Sure. Play black. The top right corner. Different corner than the one we just had. Bottom left corner. <laughs> Wait, uh, bottom right corner except one down. This one? Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, good. <laughs> Yeah, there you go, orthodox, right? Points, development, easy. Um, this one still gets played. Like, this is one of the sort of classic Fuseki of the last, you know, 40, 50 years that hasn't really gone out of fashion. Like, it's just still here. This is still considered good for black. It's good for everyone. It's normal. Very normal. Cool. 
Um, let me talk about this. What, else, what else did we not cover yet? I have a list. Can I ask a question? Oh, sure. Uh, when we pass oh. from phase one to two of the opening, and we're doing enclosure slash approach moves, why does black always approach rather than close one of his own corners? Orthodox. I mean, always. I, okay. <laughs> but is that the is that the main situation where that happens? But in in all right, but in I think what your question is getting to is that this move shows fighting spirit. <laughs> this move is forward looking. This move is kind of pessimistic. I see. Okay. <laughs> like it's like I'm just gonna go sit over here and build my own thing, just to hell with you. And this is let's play, let's dance. And you're talking to your opponent directly here. So there is, a, there is a different spirit about this move. But I think most professionals would say, they might have a personal preference, but this and this are the same in terms of their value. Like they don't know which one's better, and maybe neither one. What is true though, is that they're both on this side of the board. Uh, Why is this side of the board the important side? Because it's black. Angela knows this. Hold on, Angela, tell us. Because that black zone is further away from that white zone, so there's more pie there to fight over. There's more pie over here, <laughs> all right? There's 10 spaces worth of pie here, 10 here, 10 here, what here? 11. So Get I, the pie. I actually have a question about black playing away from white like that. Because uh, like this? You no, know, the black's second move was to play on the third line away from white. So. Here, like this, yes. Yeah, just playing right there. This is okay to do when you're black, not okay to do when you're white. Okay. Is that your question? Yeah, because yeah. in my head, I'm like, that's a losing move. And then that's I'm like, right. No, that's a setup. When you're when white, Chinese. this is a setup. <laughs> black is making the board asymmetrical. Black wants to make one side of the board biggest. But what is black's incentive to do that? Why does black want to make one side of the board biggest? Because black gets the play middle first. Because black gets the first move, right, in asymmetrical sequence. Because of white challenges, if black just says, okay, I take the other corner. Right? Wait, say that again? I, I think so. I wasn't listening well, to something. If, 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 if white tries to approach it because it's right. outside if, of there, if white black says, just takes the other corner. You made a bigger corner. Black goes, that's nice. <laughs> I got three corners. Two and a half. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, you're close enough. <laughs> White can't more than white can't damage that zone. Well, white, white, white can lean on it. White can attack. White can do things. But the point is, the stone is is strong. It's not going to die. So, black feels good, right? Okay. So the situation where black encloses his own corner yes. cannot occur when your corners are four four corners. Only when there's one thing that's low on the big side. Like yeah, basically, when you're black, you want to create an asymmetry, right? That's that's something you want to do. You want to have you want to have your first move advantage get utilized somewhere. This is a very easy way to use it, right? Just make one side of the board that's bigger than all the other sides. I get to play it first. I'm winning. This is why we have combing. So this is why this works. This move has to be on this side of the board. There's actually a lot of variations. Black, a lot of pros actually just play this. Some of them even play this. Very modern, very, very current. But they always play on this side of the board. That's the important part here. This side meaning away from that long. Everything else is 10 spaces worth of pie. Yeah. This is the one that has a little bit more. It's 11. It's 11. And remember, that, that only seems like it's one point worth of difference. But if we assume that each line is three points worth of pie, and three points for us is minus three points for our opponent. We actually say there's six more points worth of pie over here than anywhere else. That's pretty. That's pretty drastic. Six points is a lot. That's like Comey right there. It's probably not a coincidence. <laughs> probably not a coincidence. <laughs> In fact. So, uh, all right. Two more normal openings, and we'll do one crazy one. Uh, this one, we're going to go back in time a little bit. I know we just kind of went from like the 1930s up through modern. Uh, we'll take a, a, s a small time machine backwards. And let's play this one. 
what does this look like? What does it look like it's going to be? Chinese. Looks like it's going to be Chinese, right? High, low, who cares? Don't play this one. <laughs> Here. This one's actually considered by most professional state to be a bad opening. But it's still one that most people know and know it by name, so I thought I would introduce it. Oh no, I did the wrong. I didn't do the wrong one. This is the one from 40 years ago, 30 years ago. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was trying to do Shisaku and I forgot. I forgot what I was doing. Alright, so we're doing this one now. This one's 30 years old, but not in fashion anymore. I don't like it. Why don't you like it, Angela? Because it's low on the right and leaves a big gap in the middle. And yeah, it's low, low, big gap. You're not playing on the biggest side of the board. We're yeah. not playing on the biggest side of the board. It defies a bunch of things. Um, this opening became popular because there's one professional who played it a lot. And it's been explained to me by other professionals that that professional just kind of sucked at the opening. <laughs> <laughs> but was really good at fighting and counting and endgame. So he would just play this and this worked for him because he was better at all those other things. But here's how it would normally work. Like this. And this formation is called Kobayashi, named after the pro who played it. This is the Kobayashi Mark I opening. He revised, he, he came up with a second opening later on. Called Just the, Kobay one. <laughs> the Kobayashi Mark II opening that he then played. Uh, and what's actually surprisingly nice about this is that where does White want to play? In the middle and the bottom. What's the split? Yeah, if, if white wants to split, black's okay. Because now we can actually put a little bit of pressure on this stone, maybe even there, probably there's a little better. And still build this, build a box this way. And if white doesn't respond, uh, black can make this extension. How big is this extension? Three. Oh, sorry, yeah, the, in there is five. Five space extension, right? Puts a lot of pressure on white. So when black plays this, white feels very obligated to play another move. But then black can go and play another move. So it feels like black is doing really well. Right? Black got, got a big development. White feels a little bit slow. Usually white will try to ask for a little bit more and we'll have some sort of fight that comes out of this. Um, but that's what happens if white splits. So white, what if white tries this or this? Pincer? Have to pincer. And here's the thing. White looks like white is just gonna run out and be fine. Let's play this one. But see this stone here? This stone actually helps attack this it's quite quite nicely. White can't just keep running this way. And so this actually puts a lot of pressure on white. So instead White can't approach with one of these two um, ideal moves, and White usually has to approach with a move like this, back off just a little bit, right this way, pincer. And this is this is the most normal way how to play Kobayashi. If you ever, if you ever play Kobayashi, you need to know this Joseki really well. Now, there's actually a number of variations here. And the current one I think is actually V Valley. So why do they ever play this? That's a simple one. Um, and I think to leave that out, yeah, actually, I think it's there. I don't play Kobayashi ever, so I don't really know this one. But this is sort of like reminiscent of the just like you have to play. And Black's just going to keep developing this while trying to put pressure on this. Well, I wish I'd known that this afternoon. Yeah? Can I do this one? Yeah, I got one there like that, yeah. Uh, if White approaches here, there's really only two moves for Black. One's there, just protect the corner directly, be solid or attack and build outward. And this one works well if you have a stone here, right? Because you're building a box. If you, don't, if you already have a stone here, this one's actually wrong. Because it makes it too easy for white just to reduce this. Okay, anyway, moral of the story, this is the Kobayashi formation. I advise you not to play it, but you should at least know it by name. Because other people will play it and just know that if you do this, don't, answer too, or don't approach too closely, give yourself some space because this stone is actually very useful. All right, let's do the actual historical Fuseki I wanted to do. This one was made famous by probably the most famous Go player of all time. Anyone know who I'm talking about? Shusaku. 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 There. 
And again, Shisaku, for the most part, really didn't play Hoshi, right? They valued almost more than anything else. This is the key thing to remember. But Shisaku and his contemporaries put a lot of value on this formation, right? This little knight corner enclosure. They felt this was tremendously powerful. Points, influence, base, solid. It's almost the two most effect, effect, uh, effective and efficient ways to use your stones on the board. You can put two stones in any one place. This is what you want to do. So they felt this was amazing. So this is often how a game would go. Black would play here. White would play here. Black would play here. And white goes, oh no, you're going to make those corner things. So I'll play here. So black goes, OK, you ruined my corner thing there, but my stone is still strong. Let's go make another one. Or we'll say, no, you're going to make another one. And at this point, black looks at the board and goes, oh, you have two stones on my side of the board. We need to defend my side of the board. This is the Shisaku Kosumi. Shusaku move. And depending on what white did, white has a lot of options now. White can play over here, white can play over here, white can even come down here and play this. That's perhaps the most Again, preventing that corner enclosure. So this is the Shusaku opening. Sometimes it's called the 135 opening. Meaning your first corner, your first first move is in the corner, your third move of the game is in the corner, the fifth move of the game is in the corner, because white gets alternating moves. 135 corners. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> White's a racing block, but it hasn't really... No one's done anything. No one's accomplished anything in this yeah. game, right? It seems so disconnected. Everything is just... Yeah. We'll have the, the cross opening. Kind of. You know, fighting everywhere. Everyone has influence everywhere. Everyone has simultaneous positions to resolve. But again, in the 1800s, when Shusaku was playing like this, these games take a really long time. And as we played over multiple days to play a single go game. And those days would be spread out over sometimes many months. And uh, you'd have time to think. <laughs> so they tended to play a lot of these non-simple things where there were lots of things happening all at once. And again, this idea of trying to find the one single best move on the board sort of consumed them. And again, their values were they were very afraid of these corner enclosures, right? They valued corners. Getting the first move in the corner was a big deal, but also getting the second move in the corner was also a very big deal. And that sort of, this opening sort of came out of that mindset. This is not really played by pros a whole lot anymore today, but everyone knows it. And if anyone starts playing it, they will know it. 135 Shusaku. Pardon me? Shusaku opening. Oh, right, yeah, of course. Yeah. See, Chris knows it. Yeah. He's not excited about it. The thing was that if Shusaku was playing black, he sort couldn't of be defeated. Way. Yeah. He just pretty much couldn't lose. However, it's to be noted that this was in the days before Comey. Also true. <laughs> so if you're good enough where Comey really makes a difference in your planning at this stage, you should take that into consideration. I would have loved to be able to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's, that's why actually pros will say they don't play this anymore, it's really because of Comey, because black has to make up for these lost points. Black just can't sit around playing defensive, preventing white from taking anything big. Uh, black actually has to build something bigger than white now, so overcome that Comey. So we don't see this played a lot, but still a very cool opening, and you know, certainly you, one you should know. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Last opening. Again, these last two I know really aren't played. I'm not going to encourage you to play them. Uh, but this last one, uh, I would encourage you to play it because it's stupid. <laughs> and I showed some of you earlier before you came in. Uh, this is called the Great Wall. Uh, I know one. there's one uh, guy, I forgot where he's from, uh, named Bruce Wilcox, who claims he invented it. But I think there's other people who sort of come up with similar ideas, if not the exact same idea before him. Uh, Black plays here. 
Clearly, what happened to never Tengen? <laughs> clearly, Tengen is the best move in the game. It should always be played because it's the only unique move on the board. <laughs> so clearly, that's the best move. You gotta go for the symmetrical position. <laughs> Take make sure you, you know, immediately grasp the center. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Not, no, John, not just the center. The entire bowl. <laughs> you know, influence everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> the game is over. White has lost. You got to think of that maybe this is a vision. <laughs> now let's say White plays a normal looking move. White plays this move. Mm. Sort of preempting any sort of White five space extension here. Right, just takes that five space extension right away. So white plays over here. And black goes, aha. Uh, you might build a five space extension this way. <laughs> <laughs> and white does something silly like this, takes another corner, just following traditional opening theory. So black says, you know what? I need to put some pressure on you. It's at the time of the game where we need to start applying ourselves. <laughs> there it goes. That's nice, you know? I like my corners. What can I say? Corner kind of guy. And Black says, the Great Wall is completed. <laughs> this is a real, quote unquote, real opening in the sense that people have played this. This is kind of a fun opening. Uh, but what's kind of cool about this is all of Black Stone is already working together. It's actually very difficult for White to build things on this board. This is like lemmings holding hands. A little bit, yeah. It's sort of like a, I'm gonna use a football metaphor, which I understand is not gonna reach any of my audience. <laughs> if you ever watch like the Seahawks game, right, and on the kickoff, they get the two football players to hold hands and run down the field for blocking. Ever see this? You guys have no idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> this is actually a rule, you're allowed to, this is like the only time in football you're allowed to hold hands. <laughs> you want, next game of football you watch, I'm serious. Angela doesn't believe me, right, on the kickoff? I a team that's receiving the ball, like to have two guys, two big dudes, hold hands and run down the field. And just basically clothesline anyone who comes near them. <laughs> but this is that, right? Anything that comes near is getting clotheslined. Just... And so, if White tries to develop anything, right, someone can say, ah, I played a real opening. You played a fake opening. You could just compare to Red Rover. Red Rover? Oh, Red Rover, Red Rover. Do you, do you hold hands in Red Rover? Sense. Yeah. yeah. So you have to, otherwise, like, otherwise, otherwise that's like you push push the, the game. Game. That's the point, is you're like, Red Rover, Red Rover, send John over, and then John's supposed to try to break our chain of hands, but he can't, if he can't get through. Apparently, I don't know how Red Rover's played. I'm, I'm thinking of Red Light, Green Light. Mm. That's yeah, different. That's, uh, that's a different game. It's very different. different. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't know how to play Red Rover. <laughs> that's the lesson. I reached today. this that's room. <laughs> <laughs> But I can just start throwing stones in here, in here, just... All of these are your friends. Any fight that goes on here, White is outnumbered. Just, just, shooting, we'll start, just shooting arrows from the wall. It's six against three. White, you, every, every person of White that's on this board is outnumbered by two to one. You basically split the game in half. That's right. And in both halves, you had a black edge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so why does the black just put in the center on the left side? and uh, break it up even smaller. When, uh, like right now? Yeah. Oh, sure. You can do this. That's biased to one side, though. But Whereas this, if, this, if you have it like straight down the middle, this then... Is, but this but is, again, again, the idea here is, oh, White's trying to take this? It's time to fight. As soon as White wants anything, <laughs> it's time to fight. Hmm. Prevent White from getting anything. So, I would encourage you to try it. <laughs> you know, it, it looks stupid, but the nice thing about it is if you play this a couple of times, and I've done it, you know, just kind of for fun, like blitz game on the internet kind of thing, uh, you know, kind of for fun, it's, uh, you're going to learn actually a lot about central influence and how important it is in a fight. All ladders work for black. Black always has somewhere to run to. Black always has somewhere to run. Your stones are not weak anywhere. It's actually really difficult to attack. You can throw a stone anywhere on this side of the board. It's very difficult for White to actually attack it or even kill it. Even no. one, one. No. <laughs> one, one. <laughs> one, one in vain. <laughs> Not a one, one. Can't play one, one, Matt. Okay. <laughs> Failed. <laughs> Almost anywhere. <laughs> All right. So there, so there, that, there. With that strength, why don't you see it then in 
Well, here's the thing with this, because these moves are not optimal for white. Yeah. White, shouldn't be, white should not be continuing the same strategy in this case. So this is kind of a trap, right? And this is, this is I'm, again, I'm telling this to you guys because if you play an equally ranked opponent based on your level, your opponent's gonna do this, and your opponent is gonna get his or her ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> because they're like, look at all my points. <laughs> Not at all. I'm go get, a, go get a, a cup of tea now. And you need a stone there. <laughs> I'm just like, where do my points go? <laughs> I can't attack this. Yeah, if I try it here, no problem, you just run out. It's out. Mine has no further attack on this. <laughs> this is the, two of the strongest stones on the board now. White wants to take points over here. No problem. I'll go take this. Might attack these two. Fun. It's a fun game. You're going to learn how to use influence and how to attack really quickly if you play a game like this. So what does White do? I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually had anyone play it against me. <laughs> I've only used it on unsuspect unsuspecting people. I think white actually has to give up one of the corners. Like if he just plays all four fours, none of his stones are by design not really working together. They're not. That's right? like there's the too one much, advantage there's white too much influence. has. So I almost think white should play like two enclosures. Tom, of, yeah, Tom was thinking this for a little I don't, bit. I, maybe, yeah. maybe you play one and like take two other corners, but you can't just put one move in each corner. I don't think, as white. Well, it's your next move. Where do you play now? I think now you just try to ensure that black makes no points, because you have two corners. <laughs> so everyone just has to make sure no one else makes any other points. I think the enclosure should be facing the other way. Or face. Oh, I think so too, David. Yeah. That's good. Okay. But, um, I mean, White could maybe take it to the corner or something, like but, like, White has no points. That's Black's weakness, so I feel like White should just take cash where he can and make sure Black doesn't turn Yeah, I mean, Black has no points yet, right? Yeah. So. Why does the, so the side, why doesn't White, I mean, excuse me, why, why doesn't White just go for another corner? <laughs> Well, it can, you, if you play take with a four, like how do you take this corner? Yes, <laughs> from. Well, black still eight. plays. Even if you take the corner, I think black still plays yeah. here. Actually, in this game, black might play here just to separate. But yeah, let's play there. Uh, I don't. I don't know how this is supposed to go. This isn't a real yeah. opening. <laughs> is, the, is the moral of the story? I think you should just try it though, because again, it's a good training tool in terms of you learning the value of this. It looks stupid, but it turns out it's surprisingly useful. Because any white stones here, it's like you play without even seeing them. You're just like, oh, you have a stone there? How cute. <laughs> right? I play here. <laughs> it works. I mean, you'll actually be able to use this stone because of the, how strong this is. Cool? Okay. So, that's our basic dictionary of opening Fuseki. A uh, little recap. What do we talk about? Chinese. Chinese, high and low Chinese. And mini and, mini. and mini and, and micro. micro. So there's Simon four say. Chinese versions. Simon and say. And the wall. Shisaku. Shisaku. Orthodox. Orth Orth All right. So yeah, of of, of let's uh, let's say the ones that you are most likely to play in a game. There's six. Okay. Kobayashi, let's not play Kobayashi. You can play it if you want. I remember the word. But you remember the word, then you should do it. Because you only remember it because he's the name of the it has the same name as the hot dog eating champion. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reason why I remember it. <laughs> what? You know, they're like the like the, the, the world's big. famous best hot dog eater. He's oh, surprisingly yeah. skinny. Yeah, there's, there's a, a skinny Japanese guy. I think there's an annual contest to like eat as many hot dogs as you can in ten or twelve minutes, and he. I think shattered pulled, the competition. He pulls numbers like 37, which is kind of scary if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 YouTube, Kobayashi yeah, yeah, hot dogs. Yeah, seen a video of this. They take like a cup of water, dump the hot dog in it, and basically just right down the throat, yeah, like this is one shot. process it as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Sorry. See, everyone who's watching this video on YouTube right now just has <laughs> left the video <laughs> to Google Kobayashi <laughs> eating hot dogs. <laughs> So, anyway, there's six that you should know as far as that are, that are likely to come up in your games. San Rense. San Rense. Orthodox. Low Chinese. High Chinese. 
mini Chinese, micro Chinese. Those are the six you are now required to know to attend this class ever again. <laughs> and then for fun, we talk about the Kobayashi, the Shisaku, and the Great Wall. Is Shizaku the guy that um, Kiroko knows yes. about? Yeah, so the spirit that... Sai. Sai, uh, Sai is the, the spirit that... Uh, uh, I would say perpetrates, that's the right word. Uh, he attaches per- himself. He attaches himself. Yeah. There's a word for this, though. Like possess. He haunts. He haunts Shizaku. 1900s and Shizaku dies, and then a spirit gets trapped in the go-board, and then he gets haunts Hikaru. Yes, yeah. that's Shizaku. Because I remember the episode where he was like really confused about the four gold points. He's like, why are you playing there? Yes. And he was Does like, this? you're too slow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. OK. You guys want to play some Go? You guys want to try for some games? You want to try some of these out? Try it out. Play. Play Go. <laughs>